Whew. It was so warm out, and then all of a sudden it got to be cold again. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. Yes, oh perfect. go. Perfect. You're most welcome. Let's start a minute early. Good morning and welcome to St. Vincent's. If you're a visitor, we're so happy that you can share this Mass with us this morning. Please join us in our opening song number 446 in your music issue, Seek Ye First. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us. 
You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. Amen. 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 Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blood. 
Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn to you, Lord, in times of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. Then I acknowledge my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble. first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God. Just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, just as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you might proclaim his gospel worthily and well, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. has arisen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus, and kneeling down, 
begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, See that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. With every step you take in your life, which way do you move? Toward Jesus? Or away from Jesus? Or are you discombobulated, which means confused and disconnected, and not sure which way to go? The first reading today is from Leviticus thought to have been written somewhere around six centuries before Christ. It's one of the first five books of the Old Testament, which together are known as the Pentateuch. And for our Jewish brothers and sisters, and you probably heard this, it's called the Torah. And we also share these first five books with our Muslim brothers and sisters. Do we have a lot in common? Using Jewish tradition, and remember, Jesus was a Jew, there were 613 different commandments or laws associated with these first five books of the Bible. The book of Leviticus, which we heard from today, has 247 of these 613 laws. So it's, it's a large percentage of the number of laws in, in, the, in the Pentateuch. The, these laws had explicit detail in how the Jewish people were to conduct the Jewish liturgies. They had rules on how to do sacrifices, how to install priests, norms of ritual purity, and so on. And the priests, they had the most important roles, administering judgments and remedies whenever there was a question about compliance with the law. We heard in our reading today about the laws surrounding leprosy. The requirement was that anyone who had a skin sore or a scab, they had to have it examined by the priest. If that sore met the prescription that what was written down in, in the law, then that person was exiled from the community. No one was to get close to them, let alone even touch them. The people feared, and rightly so, that leprosy was contagious. Can you imagine how harsh being exiled from the community would seem? How would it seem today? We know for those who experienced COVID-19, there were similarities in families where they were split apart because someone was ill maybe in the hospital suffering, maybe even passed away, and couldn't have contact with their family. How far we've come. Although many of the old laws are now no longer relevant, knowing the laws and how Jesus confronted them in his own teaching, it, it is still very important. Recall from Matthew in 5.17, where Jesus said in his most famous Sermon on the Mount, 
Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And we know fulfilling the old law also meant giving us some new laws. Today, we know that leprosy is a chronic infectious disease caused by a bacterium. The disease affects the skin and nerve endings so that often people who have leprosy, they're not able to feel things like uh, hot running water over their hands. They won't feel the heat. And it can be deforming to them too. And according to my research, and this surprised me, there are still over 200,000 cases of leprosy reported each year around the world. Fortunately, if treated early, we have drugs that can now cure leprosy, if you can get the drugs. Still, left untreated, the disease can lead to disabilities for that person. In the Old Testament, it was believed that if someone was identified by a priest as having leprosy, it was a sign they or someone in their family had sinned against God. And this was the retribution they received for that sin. In the time of Moses, people ran away from those with leprosy, and lepers were not to come even close to anyone who was healthy. Some even threw stones at them to keep them further away. Turning now to our gospel, like he does so many times when confronting the Jewish tradition, Jesus flips the tradition on its head. Instead of trying to stay isolated and away from someone with leprosy, an assumed sinner, he allows a leper to step toward him this way, right? And then Jesus reaches out and touches him. Jesus steps toward the perceived sinner, while the Jews go the opposite way. The leper did not avoid Jesus, but stepped toward him, knelt down, and started to beg. If you wish you can make me clean, what faith the leper must have had in Jesus as a healer and not as a stone thrower. Where did the leper get such faith? Maybe, maybe he just heard about Jesus and the stories of his healings and he was just really hopeful. In any case, Jesus now moves toward the leper, stretches out his hand, touches the leper, and he is immediately healed. Wow! Following up after the healing, Jesus refers to the Old Testament six, 600 years earlier, and he says he invokes Moses, who would have ordered at that time, if someone who was infected had now appeared healed, he sent the healed man to the priest for evaluation. Assuming the priest in this case found the man clean, the leper would then be allowed to go back into the Jewish society. And thinking about each of our own situations today, if we consider lepers as those who have sinned, then each one of us is a leper. We're all sinners. But like the leper in our story today, to be healed to be forgiven where our souls are made clean again, we must step toward Jesus. Any other direction will not do it for us. Jesus is the healer. Our priests, like Father Mike, Father Paul, acting in persona Christi, or in other words, in the person of Christ, can heal us through the sacraments of penance and anointing of the sick, where both sacraments are associated with forgiveness of sins. And in receiving forgiveness of our sins by Jesus, we will always be stepping towards him and not away. Never, 
never knowingly and willingly step away from Jesus. Always step towards him. And if you're confused or, what's that word? Discombobulated. I just looked that up this week. Pray to the Holy Spirit for guidance or ask someone you trust to make sure your step is toward Jesus and not away from him. As we begin Lent this week, consider ourselves as lepers or those who have sinned against Christ. And realizing this, then let us repent of our sins using the sacrament of confession where, where we will receive sanctifying grace from God to help us to grow in righteousness and holi holiness. And let us continue to pray and to fast as we memorialize and follow our Lord's passion and death and resurrection, which culminates on Easter morning. And with every step you take in your life, Consider which way you move. Make it toward Jesus, not away. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is sent into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now in faith we bring our prayers to God. For the Church of God in every place, that she may shine forth as a community of reconciliation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government agencies working for public health, that they may succeed in wiping out the scourge of disease, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have neglected the sacraments, that they may return to the healing peace of personal confession, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those studying for the priesthood, that they may prepare wisely and well for the permanent grace of ordination. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the poor, the lonely, the discouraged, the emotionally disturbed, and all who need our prayers this day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that Christ may cleanse them and bring them to glory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those we are remembering in our hearts, and for Betty Lux, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for Father Aaron Pfaff, whose birthday was the other day, and for Father Martin Rodriguez, who had just got transferred to a new parish in Mexico. For blessings on them, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our and for peace in this world, and for the innocent victims of war, particularly children. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today is the feast day of Our Lady of Lords, so we have a blessing for those who are ill in body, mind, or soul. Lord God, you sent your Son into the world to bear our infirmities and to endure our sufferings. For our sick brothers and sisters, your servants, we ask that your blessing through the intercession of Our Lady of Lords will give them strength to overcome their weakness through the power of patience and the comfort of hope, and that with your aid, those who are ill in body, mind, or soul among us will soon be restored to health. We ask your blessing on them, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And it's almost Valentine's Day, so a blessing on our married couples. If you're next to your spouse, hold hands. Lord our God, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman, so that they might enter a communion of life and love in the holy sacrament of matrimony. You likewise bless the union of these married couples, so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their lives, you have preserved the union between them in marriage. Renew now their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace, so that surrounded by their families, through the intercession of St. Valentine, they might always rejoice in the gift of your love and your blessing. We ask that blessing on them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as the altar is prepared. Please join us in our offertory song number 535 in the music issue, Prayer of St. Francis. channel of your peace, where there is hatred, let me bring your love, where there is injury, your heart and Lord, and where there's
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will a source of e the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to be glory, to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith We proclaim your head, O Lord 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent de Paul, St. Bernadette, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith, Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace, Deacon. Thanks. Peace, you guys. by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. 
keep me always faithful to your commandments. I never let me depart from you. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, and I will say the word that my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep you safe. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The blood of Christ. Thank you. Thank you. The body of Christ. 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 May God bless you. May God bless you. May God bless you. The body of Christ. 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 God bless you, Michael. The body of Christ. One, one day you the body of Christ. The body of Christ. God bless you always. The body of Christ. 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 The goodness the body of Christ, the Lord, the body of Christ, the 
the body of Christ, 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 May God bless you, the body of Christ. 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 God bless your mother. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Oh, taste and see. Taste and see the good. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have a handful of announcements here, folks. First of all, um, there is a St. Vincent de Paul Society meeting on Monday night. That would be tomorrow at 6.30 and in, will be in the St. Vincent Hall. 
and many, many thanks uh, for a wonderful chili cook-off yesterday. It was absolutely awesome. Thanks to all who made that possible and attended and participated. Also, remember that Ash Wednesday is this Wednesday, which is also Valentine's Day. You might have your nice romantic dinners on Tuesday night, because on Wednesday you should not eat meats, and you should eat at most one meal, and a couple snacks are permitted. But um, anyways, you should. Uh, it's a day of fasting and abstinence, and so please attend that. And also that there are many Masses on Ash Wednesday. Uh, the one that will be here will be at 6 o'clock, and all are welcome. There are also opportunities at St. Joseph that you can look at those times in the bulletin. Also, remember, next Sunday is our monthly food drive. Please bring some canned goods or other items with you to share with those who need our help. Uh, also next Sunday, the Knights of Columbus will be cooking up their world-famous sausage gravy, biscuits, and eggs. So make plans to join them for breakfast in the hall after Mass. That would be next Sunday. There is confirmation class today at 4 o'clock, uh, 4.30, 4.30. And also a youth group Super Bowl party, 6 o'clock, the usual youth group time. We'll watch it on the big screen. Also, Wednesdays during Lent, a lot will be happening here at St. Vincent. Adoration all day after the morning Mass. And then the details are in the bulletin, but then also Stations of the Cross every Wednesday during Lent here at St. Vincent at 7 o'clock. And so please, um, please come along. And I didn't realize until very recently that Father Paul actually had written his own version of Stations of the Cross. So those are the ones that will be used. And, and it's just pretty, they're really beautiful. Boy. Uh, anyways, also how to do a good Lent. Somebody asked me yesterday at lunch how to do a good Lent. And I think Deacon Charlie's homily kind of hit it on the head there. When you think about what you might do and pray about fasting, prayer, almsgiving, What's going to help you make a giant step towards Jesus? You know, if, if giving up chocolate will do that, okay, but like what's going to really make, help you make a ginormous step towards Jesus? That's what we need to pray about. What will we do for prayer, fasting, and almsgiving that will help in that regard? So blessings to all. I will see you on Ash Wednesday. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. America. There she is, and Nancy. At de la familia. 